Today, we revisit a fascinating divisibility problem. But this time, we're not just solving it. We're correcting a beautiful but flawed proof and discovering something far more profound. The question asks, which positive integers en divide 2 to the power n plus 1? A viewer discovered a critical flaw in my original approach that leads to a much richer mathematical landscape. Before we begin, I want to give special thanks to Park, whose YouTube handle is at Penintator, for providing both the counterexample and the rigorous analysis that exposed the flaw. This is peer review at its finest. First, let's establish what we got right. We'll need a couple of basic facts before diving into the main theorem. First, any solution n greater than 1 must be odd. If n were even, then 2 to the n plus 1 would be odd, but an odd number cannot be divisible by an even number greater than 1. Second, all powers of 3 are solutions. We'll prove this using the lifting the exponent lemma. Since 2 is congruent to negative 1 modulo 3, we can compute that 2 cubed is congruent to negative 1 modulo 9. Before applying the lifting the exponent lemma, we must rigorously verify its conditions. First, our prime p equals 3 is odd. Second, 3 divides the sum 2 plus 1. Third, 3 does not divide 2 or 1. With these conditions satisfied, we can proceed. By the lifting the exponent lemma, the 3 adic valuation of 2 to the 3 to the k plus 1 equals the valuation of 2 cubed plus 1 plus k minus 1. This gives us exactly k plus 1. Therefore, 3 to the k plus 1 divides the expression, which immediately implies 3 to the k divides it as well. Through a rigorous analysis of multiplicative order, we can prove that the smallest prime factor of any solution, n greater than 1, must be exactly 3. This result is ironclad. Since p divides n and n divides 2 to the n plus 1, we get that 2 to the n is congruent to negative 1 modulo p. By squaring both sides of this congruence, we find that 2 to the power of 2 times n is congruent to 1 modulo p. Let d be the multiplicative order of 2 modulo p. Since 2 to the 2n is congruent to 1, d must divide 2n. By Fermat's little theorem, d also divides p minus 1. Let's pause to note a crucial subtlety. The order d cannot divide n. If it did, 2 to the n would be congruent to 1, but we know it's congruent to negative 1, which would imply p divides 2, an impossibility. So d must divide their greatest common divisor. We need a crucial lemma. If p is the smallest prime factor of n greater than 1, then the greatest common divisor of n and p minus 1 equals 1. Proof by contradiction. Suppose some prime q divides both n and p minus 1. Since q divides p minus 1, we have q is strictly less than p. But this contradicts our assumption that p is the smallest prime factor of n. Therefore, no such q exists. Therefore, the greatest common divisor of n and p minus 1 is exactly 1, completing the proof of our lemma. This collapses the entire expression. Since p cannot be 2, as 2 doesn't divide the odd number 2 to the n plus 1. p is odd, so p minus 1 is even. Therefore, the GCD becomes exactly 2, and d can only be 1 or 2. Since 2 to the n is not congruent to 1 modulo p, we cannot have d equals 1, so d must equal 2. Since d equals 2 and d divides p minus 1, we have 2 divides p minus 1, confirming p is odd. Since 2 squared is congruent to 1 modulo p, we have 4 congruent to 1 modulo p, which means p divides 3. Therefore, p equals 3, since p is prime and divides 3. Now comes the critical error. I made a subtle but devastating logical leap that invalidated the entire conclusion. I incorrectly concluded that if the smallest prime factor is 3, then all prime factors must be 3. This is a classic overgeneralization error. The proof constrains only the smallest prime factor. It says nothing about the others. 
This distinction is absolutely crucial. This led to the false conclusion that solutions are only powers of three. But mathematics demands evidence, not wishful thinking. A brilliant viewer provided the mathematical equivalent of a smoking gun, a concrete counterexample that demolishes the false conjecture. And here is the exact number Park provided. N equals 171. Its prime factorization is 3 squared times 19. The smallest prime factor is indeed 3, as our theorem predicts. But notice, it also has 19 as a prime factor. If my original conclusion were correct, this number could never be a solution. Let's rigorously verify whether 171 actually divides 2 to the 171st power plus 1 using modular arithmetic. First, since 9 and 19 are coprime by the Chinese remainder theorem, 171 divides the expression if and only if both 9 and 19 divide it separately. So we need both conditions to hold. Modulo 9. The multiplicative order of 2 modulo 9 is 6. Since 171 equals 6 times 28 plus 3, we get 2 to the 171st congruent to 2 cubed equals 8, which is negative 1 modulo 9. Therefore, 9 divides the expression. Modulo 19. By Fermat's little theorem, the order of 2 modulo 19 divides 18. Let's verify. 2 to the 9th equals 512, which is congruent to negative 1 modulo 19. Since 2 to the 9th is congruent to negative 1 but not to 1, the order is exactly 18. Since 171 equals 18 times 9 plus 9, we have 2 to the 171st congruent to 2 to the 9th, which is negative 1 modulo 19. Therefore, 19 also divides 2 to the 171st plus 1. Therefore, 171 is indeed a solution. The original conjecture is definitively false. The existence of this counterexample reveals something profound. The problem is not about elimination, but construction. We can build infinite families of solutions. To make our construction precise, we need the concept of multiplicative order. The multiplicative order of a modulo m is the smallest positive integer d, such that a to the d is congruent to 1 modulo m. Key fact, if n divides 2 to the n plus 1, then the multiplicative order of 2 modulo n must divide 2 times n. Here's the most general construction lemma. If n divides 2 to the n plus 1, and m is any factor of 2 to the n plus 1 that is coprime to n, then n times m also divides 2 to the power nm plus 1. Proof. Since m divides 2 to the n plus 1 and m must be odd, we have 2 to the n congruent to negative 1 modulo m. Therefore, 2 to the n m is congruent to negative 1 modulo both m and n, since m is odd. By the Chinese remainder theorem, since n and m are coprime, their product divides 2 to the n m plus 1. Let me outline the systematic construction algorithm. First, start with any power of 3. Second, compute 2 to the n plus 1 and factor it completely. Third, we apply our lemma. For each new prime factor p that we find, which is coprime to n, our lemma guarantees that n times p is a new solution. Fourth, Recursively apply this process to all new solutions, creating an infinite branching tree. Let's see this algorithm in action. Starting with n equals 9, we compute 2 to the 9th plus 1 equals 513. Factoring. 513 equals 3 cubed times 19. The prime 19 is new. The prime 19 is new. It doesn't divide 9, so we can construct the next solution. 9 times 19 gives 171. And just like that, we have derived Park's counterexample from first principles. It's not an accident. It's the natural result of the construction process. This construction process is guaranteed to work indefinitely, creating an infinite, tree-like structure of solutions. But what if it didn't? 
What if the construction fails? This would mean that for some solution n, the number 2 to the n plus 1 is composed only of prime factors that already divide n. Consider the shear scale. 2 to the n plus 1 is vastly, almost unimaginably larger than n. For n equals 171, we'd be claiming that 2 to the 171st plus 1, a number with 52 digits, is made only of 3s and 19s. This seems profoundly unlikely. How could such a colossal number be built using only the same small prime building blocks as the tiny number n? Zygmondi's theorem states that for coprime integers, a greater than b greater than zero, the term a to the n plus b to the n has at least one primitive prime divisor for all n greater than zero, with the single exception of 2 cubed plus 1 cubed equals 9. For our problem, with a equals 2 and b equals 1, the theorem guarantees that 2 to the n plus 1 has a primitive prime divisor for every n greater than 0, except for n equals 3. A primitive prime p means that p does not divide 2 to the k plus 1 for any positive k less than n. The exceptional case is n equals 3, where 2 cubed plus 1 equals 9 equals 3 squared, which lacks primitive prime divisors. Here's the key insight connecting Zygmondi to our construction. In our tree, all prime factors of any solution n we've constructed must divide some 2 to the k plus 1 with k less than n by the very history of how we constructed n. Therefore, any primitive prime from 2 to the n plus 1, which by definition doesn't divide any smaller case, guarantees we can extend within our constructed tree. Critical gap. This reasoning doesn't prove there are no rogue solutions outside our construction tree. This remains the major open question. The complete solution set forms an infinite tree. The trunk consists of powers of three, and from each node, infinite branches grow through the construction process. Let's state the complete corrected solution with the mathematical precision it deserves. First rule. Every solution greater than 1 must be divisible by 3. This makes 3 the universal foundation. Second rule. From any solution, we can construct infinitely many others by attaching new prime factors from the corresponding power of 2 plus 1. The solution set includes 1, the powers of 3, and infinitely many composite numbers like 171 and beyond. The completeness question, whether our construction captures all solutions, remains open, though we have strong evidence supporting it. First, Zygmondi's theorem guarantees that our construction process never terminates, creating infinite branching. Second, all known solutions fit this inductive pattern without exception. Third, computational searches within accessible bounds have found no solutions outside this framework. However, we must acknowledge that very large solutions might exist beyond our current computational capabilities. To state the open question with full mathematical precision, let S be the set of all solutions, and let S not be the set of all powers of 3. Define the construction operator C of n as n times p, where p is a prime that divides 2 to the n plus 1 but doesn't divide n. We conjecture that S is the closure of S0 under repeated applications of C. This reformulation into the language of sets, initial seeds, and closure operators is the gateway to real mathematical research, transforming our problem into a genuine open question. Our honest assessment, we have established the proven structure of an infinite recursive tree rooted at powers of three. But the question of whether this captures all solutions remains genuinely open. This correction illustrates a profound transformation from a false solution to recognition of a genuine open mathematical problem. Sometimes the most honest answer is that we don't yet know. Thank you to all viewers who engage critically with mathematical content. Your vigilance makes our shared understanding stronger and more beautiful. Mathematics thrives on this collaborative spirit